How are you? It's pretty powerful. I found it so fascinating. It's kind of like I get a bird's eye view of everything that's going on up here from the way that people walk up to the way that they engage. Um, and I can just, I just want to thank each and every one of you for allowing me to observe your own process. And I'm going to encourage you to allow the process to continue to unfold for you. Because it will not surprise me in any way, shape, or form as if this thing takes a while for it to finish, if it ever finishes, right? Because the truth is we're all a work in progress, yeah? And so now we talk about the white stone ceremony. First of all, did everybody get a white stone? Okay, everyone got one? Good, excellent. So the white stone is based off a verse in the Bible from Revelations um, 217. It says, let anyone who has ear, ears to listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I'll give some of the hidden manna, and I will give a white stone. And on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except for the one who receives it. It was a custom back in the ancient days that during slavery in the Holy Land, a prisoner was given a white stone when he was freed from servitude as a token of his freedom, her freedom. And on that stone was a new name that the person would take in their new life. So with the white stone, I want you to imagine, as you hold it in your hands as we go through the process in a minute, Again, tapping into spirit and allowing spirit to reveal to you a thought, a name, an idea, something for you that you'll be working on throughout the course of the year. It's a time to really listen to the voice of spirit of your higher power or your inner self, if you will. So we're gonna do a meditation. I'm gonna lead you through the meditation. I'm gonna ask you to really t tie in, listen to your spirit to the best that you can, right? You won't be listening to your logical brain. If it helps you, for some, put your hands over your heart. Imagine connecting to your spirit that way, if that helps you. Maybe you can do it without doing that, but I'm just trying to help you along. So again, the process, what are we doing with the white stone? You're giving yourself permission now that we've let all this stuff go to stand in this moment of freedom. The past is the past, we're letting it go. We're gonna be given a new word or two. Um, in the tradition, they actually use Israel stones, which are a little bit bigger. The ones that we've got are not quite as big. So if you get a word, normally what would happen is I would say, put it on your rock, and then let that rock be somewhere where you can see it every day over the next year. These stones might be a little bit small. If you can still do that on your stone, cool. If not, however, you need to create the space to be able to hold on to this word, this idea, this thought, who knows? Maybe you are given a new name. Maybe. That's what spirit has to show you. And so in a moment, we're going to do that. But I wanted to share a little bit of a story with you that I think perfectly illustrates this idea of this new space, this new time. And the story is called the Wemix. The Wemix were a small wooden people. Each of the wooden people was carved by a woodmaker named Eli, or Eli, excuse me. His workshop sat on a hill overlooking their village. Every Wemick was different. Some had big noses, others had large eyes. Some were tall, others were short. Some wore hats, others wore coats, but all were made by the same carver and lived in the village. And all day, every day, the Wemicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemick 
had a box of Golden Star stickers and a box of Gray Dot stickers. Up and down the streets all over the city, people could be seen sticking stars or dots on one another. The pretty ones, those with smooth wood and fine paint, always got the Golden Stars. But if the wood was rough or the paint chipped, the Wemix gave Gray Dots. The talented ones got stars, too. Some could lift big sticks high above their heads and jump over tall boxes. Still others knew big words or could sing very pretty songs. Everyone gave them stars. Some Wemix had stars all over them. Every time they got a star, it made them feel so good that they did something else and got another star. Others, though, could do little. They got dots. Punchinello was one of these. He tried to jump high like the others, but he, was always, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather around him and give him dots, gray dots. Sometimes when he fell, it would scar his wood, so the people gave him more gray dots. After a while, he had so many dots, he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he would do something dumb, such as forget his hat or step in the water, and then people would give him another gray dot. In fact, he had so many gray dots that some people would come up and give him one without reason. He deserved lots of dots, the wooden people would agree with one another. He's not a very good wooden person. After a while, Punchinello believed them. I'm not a good Wemick, he would say. I'm stupid, I'm clumsy, I'm ugly. The few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemicks who had lots of dots. He felt better around them. One day he met a Wemick who was unlike any he had ever met. She had no dots or stars. She was just wooden. Her name was Lulia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers, it's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some admired Lulia for not having dots, so they would run up and give her a star, but it would fall off. Some would look down on her for having no stars, so they would give her a dot, but that wouldn't stay either. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchenlil. I don't want anyone's marks. So he asked, so he asked the stickerless Wemick how she did it. It's easy, Lulia responded. Every, do, every day I go see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli, the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? Why don't you go find out yourself, she said. Go up the hill. He's there. And with that, the Wemick made no marks, turned, and skipped away. But he won't want, he won't want to see me, Punchenil cried out. Lulia didn't hear. So Punchalo went home. He sat near a window and watched the wooden people as they scurried around giving each other stars and dots. It's not right, he muttered to himself. And he resolved to go see Eli. He walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop. His wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. He had to stretch on his tiptoes to see the top of the workbench. A hammer was as long as his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard, I'm not staying here, and he turned to leave. Then he heard his name. Punchinello, the voice was deep and strong. Punchinello stopped. How good to see you. Come and let me have a look at you. Punchinello turned slowly and looked at the large bearded craftsman. You know my name? The little Wemix asked. Of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped down and picked him up and set him on the bench. Hmm. The maker spoke, thoughtful as he inspected the gray circles. Looks like you've been given some bad marks. I didn't mean to, Eli. I really tried hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I don't care what the other Wemix think. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give stars or dots? They're Wemix just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think, and I think you're pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me, special? Why, I can't walk fast? I can't jump? My paint's peeling? Why do I matter to you? 
Eli looked at Punchinello, put his hand on those small wooden shoulders, and spoke very slowly. Because you're mine. That's why you matter to me. Every day I've been hoping you'd come. I came because I met someone who had no marks. I know. She told me about you. Why don't the sticker stay on her? Because she's decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about the stickers. I'm not sure I understand. You will, but it'll take some time. You've got a lot of marks. For now, just come and see me every day and let me remind you how much I care. Eli lifted Punchinello off the bench and set him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as the Wemick walked out the door, you are special to me because I made you and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but his heart, but in his heart, he thought, I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell to the ground. How many dots do we have? How many dots do you have? These dots have been gathering, and they've been put on us throughout time. And so as we go into this white stone ceremony, as the lights start to come down, thank you, Jim. I'm going to ask that you seriously think about your dots, and maybe it's time to let go of them. They're not your dots. So if we can just have a little bit of music. And as we take our white stones in our hands, And we can still feel the energy. We can still, still feel the ceremony, the energy, spirit, the angels, the helpers. They're still here. And with our white stone in our hand, give ourselves permission to be free. We give ourselves permission to let go of those dots, those gray dots. That somebody, some other place, some other thing had put on us and we have accepted. And now we're going to say no more. We give ourselves permission to be free. We are the living spirit of God. You are sovereign. You are divine. You are free. No longer held by the past. Letting go of the shackles that have held you and bound you over months, years, and decades are let go. We can imagine this light coming inside of us and freeing us in this moment, in this space. We are free. You are free now. Let the energy flow. Just imagine it coming in the top of your head, running through your body, out through your feet, down into Mother Earth. Connecting with her, grounding it. Imagine that light filling up your entire being. Pure, perfect, whole, powerful, exhilarating. Connected with yourself like never before. Connected with source, with God like never before. 
Let's have you take a deep breath in. Let it go. Take another deep breath in. Let it go. One more deep breath in. And let it go. And it's in this silence that Spirit has for us a gift. It could be a word. It could be a name. It could be an emotion. It could be a state of being. What is Spirit wanting you to focus on in this new year? Don't think with your head, think with your heart. If it helps, put your hands on your heart. You don't have to do anything here. Don't worry if it's not coming, it will. Just be in the space and let spirit do what it needs to do, what you've asked it to do. You might hear something, you might see something, you might smell something, you might taste something, or not. You're not screwing this up, you're not missing anything, you're not doing it wrong. It's absolutely perfect just the way it is right now. And as we let spirit flow into us and through us. We slowly start to come back in to our body. Come back into the space, into this time. Thanking spirit And at this time, we also bring an end to the ceremony. We thank spirits. We thank the angels. We thank the, the helpers for being here this morning with us. We are so grateful and thankful for all that you do, for all that we know and all the things we don't know. We thank you for filling us with your light, with your love, with your healing, with compassion, with grace so that we may heal. So we can be the best versions of you that you ever imagined. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, God, for this new year, for these new beginnings, for these new possibilities. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this space. Thank you for everybody that's here in person, those that are online. Amazing, amazing, amazing space. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. So, Happy New Year, everybody. Remember, this process isn't necessarily complete, but it was real. Everything that just happened was very real. And it doesn't matter what your experience was, whether it was super powerful or if it was just really chilled out or it really didn't feel like anything happened, it's okay. Nothing needed to happen. But I assure you, spirit is at work, especially if you engaged, especially if you asked it to join you, especially if you asked and gave yourself permission to engage in it. Trust me, it worked just fine. This had, it has its own divine timing. It knows what it's doing. Let go of your mind what it's supposed to be like, sound like, taste like, feel like. Get your ego out of the way and let your spirit do what it needs to do.
As we think about 2023 and moving forward, just a couple of things I want to share with you is that my spirit has been sharing with me that the message that I was given was going beyond. That was my message. And I'm also feeling like for this year, that's what we're going to be doing. And so I'm asking you, those of you that are interested, to come join me. This idea of going beyond, going beyond where we are right now, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, going beyond. And that, to me, is what 2023 is going to be looking like. In fact, my talk next week is going to be called Going Beyond. And so I ask you to join us. I ask you as you start to process what 2023 may look for you, I would ask you to spend some time with that thought. Hmm. What if I decided to go beyond where I'm currently at? What could spirit do? How could I work with spirit to actually do things that might look a little bit differently than what I'm doing right now. And so I'm excited to share that with you. I'm excited that we had a chance to be in ceremony this morning. To me, ceremony is the most sacred space that you can be in. We're going to be doing a lot more ceremonies around here. Spoiler alert. Because to me, that's what it's all about. It's coming together and joining with each other in ceremony in these spaces and these states of being where spirit can come in and do what it needs to do and we don't have to do anything all we have to do is show up create the space and then spirit takes care of it we get out of the way it's not us that's doing it it's spirit it's god it's source it's you and so i'm super excited about that one last thing i just wanted to share with you just a side note is that if anybody else wants to do another burning bowl ceremony unity Big Unity is having an online burning bowl ceremony January 4th, which is, I think, Wednesday. Yeah, that makes sense. At 11 a.m. Central Time online, you can join it. So if that, if this worked for you, you might want to consider doing that as well. Other than that, you are amazing. You are beautiful. You are divine. You are sacred. You are needed more than ever. And I could not possibly thank you enough for joining me in 2023. Happy New Year and God bless. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.